Hello everybody. Today we are at the Cedar Riverside area in beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is Saturday, May 20th, 2023. We're here at 19th and Riverside. You can walk up to Cedar, walk around that Cedar Riverside area a bit and explore the neighborhood. This is a video I've been wanting to make, but also had a request from somebody to record this area. So excited to show you all around. Here on the left is Hard Times Cafe, a cool, uh, like, I think, vegan vegetarian restaurant. Across the street, or step out into the street so you can see the building a little bit. Hot soup, vegetarian meals, hot off the grill, sandwiches, baked goods. I think they have pretty massive portion sizes here if I remember correctly too. Coffee, good vegan vegetarian food. Spot worth checking out. I haven't been there in a couple years, but definitely a cool place. Hard Knocks Cafe. Hard Times Cafe. Hard Knocks Cafe was a place in uh, San Francisco that my wife and I used to go to when we lived out there. It was a soul food type restaurant and they sold Juicy Luch, the uh, Minneapolis specialty cheese stuffed hamburger. Yeah. All right, so we're coming up on the corners of Cedar and Riverside here at Cedar Riverside. You can see the iconic Cedar Riverside apartments there in the background, inspired by, inspired by the modern artist Pierre Mondrain. Did I pronounce the name correctly? It might not be. towards 94 and then loop back this way and then explore while we explore. So this is the West Bank, Cedar Riverside area of Minneapolis. This is uh, the Cedar Cultural Center over here across the street. A music venue that has all sorts of different concerts and stuff there. apartments we were talking about. You know, a couple weeks ago when I made my last video, it's actually been, I think, about two weeks, which I try to have something out every week, but it's been about two weeks. Um, I was talking about the Doors Open Minneapolis event that was coming up, where all these downtown and different places were going to be opening up these spaces to the public. I was hoping to make some sort of video doing that, but just didn't quite work out with timing due to some of the other priorities I had that weekend. But I did get a chance to go up into the IDS Center. They had the, uh, the 50th floor, or actually it's either 50 or the 51st. I don't, first, I don't remember what it was, was open. It's a space that's called uh, I think Windows on Minnesota. You can see views around that area. It's typically like a rent space that you rent out, but they open that up for the day for uh, free access for the weekend. And it was a really cool spot. I think this afternoon I will post some pictures from that up 
on uh, the community page of the YouTube channel. This is a bar that used to be, I think it was called Nomad or Part Wolf. I thought it was called the Nomad, but it says Part Wolf. Tottenham Hotspur, Minnesota United Bar. I think they hosted a lot of uh, live music and kind of punk and hardcore metal type music in there sometimes. Sort of that kind of vibe. I did have the chance to check that out a couple times before it closed. Unfortunately, it's no longer here. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of great soccer bars here in the Twin Cities that you can still check out. If that's something you're looking for, I would highly recommend something like Black Heart in St. Paul, which is a queer LGBTQ soccer bar. That is definitely worth checking out. Great atmosphere in there, great people, great crowds for soccer games. subject of soccer I think you can head up this way this is not sure exactly what street this is but up in this direction there's a little park and then you get to Augsburg University which is the home to Edor Nelson Field which is the home of a really fun local soccer team called Minneapolis City Soccer Club very cool community owned soccer team that if you're looking for a fun place to see soccer with some talented players and a laid-back atmosphere with really nice people, I'd highly recommend checking it out. So you got uh, up here is where uh, is where Triple Rock Social Club used to be, which is the used to be a music venue owned by one of the guys from I think Dillinger Four was the band, um, kind of famous Minneapolis institution right here, which is now Selma Grill and Deli. venue. Unfortunately closed in I think maybe 2018, 2019. Cedar Plaza, or Riverside Plaza apartments here. Iconic structure. But as you can see, they look like they're aging a bit. We'll see what the future holds for this.
downtown Minneapolis. You can kind of see it over here, some of the cool coloring on this apartment building. But it is starting to fade. New Cedar Restaurant. Here on the left, you have Palmer's Bar, which is another one of those uh, kind of popular dive bars, kind of punk bar. You can do live music, all that good stuff. Occasionally, they do have some outdoor shows on the uh, patio out here. Worth checking out for that. More of that like kind of rocker vibe too though. Nice little patio. Sorry, we're open. And then we're back here at that corner of Cedar and Riverside where we essentially started with the uh, Cedar Cultural Center over here. Give you a chance to take a look at this, get an idea of some of the different musicians that will be playing around here. Music and dance for all ages. What more do you need? Place. You got like a hot dog window. Yeah. Somali cuisine. Barakala. Yeah, I wasn't sure where I was going to walk today, so I didn't do a ton of research on the area, only walking around talking about, I guess, the places that I know, but not super familiar with the history of the Cedar Riverside neighborhood and area. So if you know any information on that, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you know. I love when people come in and share information with me. It's always good to learn something new. Especially when people are correcting things that I say, that's uh, that's my favorite. I had, I did notice a couple weeks ago on that last video I posted, someone made this really long, great comment. I saw it, and it had uh, all this information about you know correcting some of the errors that I made and setting me straight on some things. And I really appreciated that 
But then the next morning when I went to go respond to it, I noticed it was gone. So if it was you that posted that and you're listening to this, put it back up. Let me know, uh, let me know what I was missing on because I do appreciate that feedback and accurate information. Got some pigeons eating. We'll probably head down to this uh, building here on the corner and then turn back and maybe head over to Seven Corners area. blood looks like it used to be a fire station not entirely sure what's in there now it's like a playground over here a park and then we've got light rail tracks down here downtown Minneapolis this way. These are those uh, Riverside Plaza apartments that we talked about a bit here. And then connecting to some of the dots here, we had that venue that we walked by about 10 minutes ago that's closed now, the Triple Rock. That was now a restaurant, I believe, called Soma. And the owners of, or the previous owners of that place when it was a venue, ah, the guys from Dillinger 4 had their, some of their band promo photos taken with these uh, apartments in the background. You're just kind of putting those pieces together, like a couple, uh, couple connections to the Cedar Riverside neighborhood there. Kiefer Court Bakery and Cafe is a pretty popular spot. I know they do like baked goods. They're pretty good. Worth checking out. Oh no, is it gone? Or is it the next spot? Oh, here we go. Oh no, I think it's gone. That's too bad. Yeah, Kiefer Court Bakery and Cafe used to be right there. But that spot has been vacated. There used to be a little bakery window with all kinds of different baked goods in there. Red Sea. Don't remember specifically what kind of food this one was, but pretty good spot.
walking up to the West Bank light rail station here. Which you can take, I believe it, this is, you can head this direction towards, uh, towards the University of Minnesota, which some of the campuses over here, and then across to the East Bank, and then towards downtown Minneapolis. And I think that'll connect you all the way through out to St. Paul. Theater in the round. So what we're coming up on here is Seven Corners, which is a used to be a pretty popular University of Minnesota, the University of Minnesota uh, by type area. Lots of little restaurants and bars, but I see that some of them have closed. Republic here on the right used to be a pretty popular beer bar, craft beer type spot. When looks like it has uh, closed at this point. And then Town Hall Brewery. Local craft beer brewery with a few locations. They have a bowling alley, a tap house, and then the brewery here. Still quite a few bars around here. So you have Bullwinkle Saloon, the corner bar here behind me. This is called Seven Corners because of the seven corners. I guess that we're intersecting here at one point. So little restaurants and shops. Many of which are closed. here to the Interstate 35, take you all the way down as far as Texas, if you stay on there and just keep going south. Very walkable area, but still pretty car centric. A lot of people pulling all sorts of maneuvers in the street that make you a little uncomfortable. You don't want to get hit by a car. Yeah, so here's uh, downtown Minneapolis. Mural there. And then we'll head back towards Seven Corners here.
Southern Theater. And here on the left is that, uh, that Town Hall Brewery that we were talking about moments ago. There's their nice patio space. Right there next to the Courtyard Marriott. Which is a pretty popular hotel for, you know, some people who visit town and when they go, come from across the country to go to Vikings games, they tend to stay here because it's an easy walk over to the stadium. There's that old Republic space. So this is, I think, 19th here that will connect over to specifically right where we started. Let's walk over and check out the river. Nice protected bike lane right here. Two way traffic getting from Northeast or U of M over towards U of M being University of Minnesota, towards that West Bank area. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous day today. About 70 degrees now. Perfect time of year here in Minnesota. Lucky to be here on days like today. I had one of my coworkers talking the other day about Minnesota and living in Minnesota in general. And another one of our coworkers just got back from uh, Bora Bora. And they said, why would you go to Bora Bora right now when you could be in Minnesota this time of year? You gotta go to Bora Bora in, uh, in the middle of winter. <laughs> kind of makes sense, but it was her honeymoon. So you uh, kind of plan around those as opposed to the weather in Minnesota. There's 11. 11 on the river.
Park 35W bridge over there. All the heavy highway traffic. Well, not heavy traffic, but consistent highway traffic. That's the bridge that famously collapsed a while back, I think about a decade ago. Bluff Street Park down below us. Let's see what kind of view we get when we get out from these trees, get into the clearing. Here we are above the Mississippi River. That's the uh, walkway we were walking on a couple weeks back. We were checking out the flood levels here. I think we'll go across the bridge and then maybe loop back around over this little bridge and see where that takes us. So yeah, we were standing down there for a bit in that video exploring the flooding along the I think it's called West River Parkway. And getting some information about the locks there in the comments from some people. I wonder if we can look and see through here. Not much, still too high. takes for us to get over to this bridge here. Yeah. Will my phone make it? Oh, the, uh, the riverboat down there, we were talking about the riverboats, and I'm not sure if you can really see it in this shot, but we were talking about those riverboats a couple weeks back. And yeah, I saw they were out the other day going up and down the river. Some kind of cool welcome to spring and summer. So this here is 11, and then you have this new building coming up here that is on Park. I think I was calling it 400 Park, but I think it might be 700 Park. And that is going to be a residential tower coming up here in the coming months. I don't think it is quite topped out yet. And then you can see in the distance almost uh, probably pretty 
pretty difficult to see through that iPhone camera. You can see that crane for North Loop Green out there, which is five, five stories from topping out in their construction. But I'm getting wrapped up in downtown and skyscrapers and tall buildings again. Why not just enjoy the nice stuff we have around here today? Let's enjoy our walk over to University Avenue. Over here on the east bank of the Mississippi River. Yeah, University of Minnesota campus. I believe this would be considered the main campus area, but I'm not certain. I know there's a lot of buildings over on both sides. I think a lot of this is a zero to five beds. I think there's a lot of uh, student housing type stuff around here. Now, if we can find our way over to that bridge that I'm looking to cross. Fortunately, it's not live, so if someone's watching and could help me, I couldn't really accept that help much. So, sorry to anyone who's watching and being like, where are you going, Tim? This is not the right direction. I think this is kind of that like frat houses and stuff.
event traffic ahead. Expect delays. Oh, maybe there's a graduation or some sort of uh, university event going on today. It is graduation season. I don't see a ton of people out in graduation type clothing, but maybe they're not quite out yet. It's about noon or so, maybe a little later in the day. Congratulations to all the recent graduates, and families of recent graduates. Anyone going through any new chapter of life, wishing you all the best in that new chapter. Roy Wilkins Hall, the University of Minnesota. Roy Wilkins who also has a, uh, a music venue named after in over in, or is it a music venue or an auditorium or a little bit of both? Music venue in St. Paul where they also do roller derby and I'm sure all kinds of other events that I just might not quite be aware of. So we're getting deeper into the Dinky Town main part of University of Minnesota campus. Probably gonna head back towards that Cedar Riverside area. There is a lot of cool stuff over here, but I think I'll probably keep that in more of like a standalone separate video. And I have been planning on doing a video in that area pretty soon here. Lots of cool little stuff over in this direction. That's one nice thing about a lot of college areas is they are set up to be very walkable. Lots of food, drink, amenities within walking distance of the places where all those new college students are living. And we build these really great life experiences in these compacted places, living amongst others and learning how to live amongst others for people who might not have lived in the city before. And hopefully take that with them and learn how to build cities that can represent or reflect those positive views of condensed living. Got a bike trail down here. I think that's the bike that goes, that trail that goes over that bridge. We're gonna turn right here. And see what we can find. fairly quiet on campus, probably because it's a little late in the year. So there's probably a lot of people who have already moved away for the year. Yeah, I've actually never explored this area.
We have the Education Sciences Building with the University of Minnesota up ahead. Campbell Hall here on the left. Yes, as we walk through here, I'll take a moment to thank everybody for watching. I always appreciate you guys watching, watching, um, if you're listening to me or watching on mute, either way, I appreciate it. Appreciate you taking some time out of your day or having me on in the background at your desk or whatever. Always appreciate any thoughts, feedback, information you might have. Hmm. So there's that bridge down there. Let's see if it connects. Or is this just going to take us to some backside parking lot? Oh, I see a guy running this way. It makes me feel a little more confident. Here we go. Dismount and walk bicycles. I don't see that happening. Entering the Mississippi River and Recreation Area. Historic marker. on it's nice too but just a little more peaceful here you got dogs and a little bit nicer view you're not catching as much of the hennepin bridge Mississippi locks down there, the lower locks. And then the Stone Arch Bridge in the distance, you can kind of see further up downtown Minneapolis. And over here, we have that Bohemian Flats area, Bohemian Flats Park. And that bridge where the light rail crosses. Down there, you can see the riverboat. Looks like people are setting up either at the picnic spot or getting ready to go on the riverboat. Absolutely gorgeous day here.
the University of Minnesota campus. Into town. I wonder where this uh, trail connects to, to the east there. Smell the uh, smell the barbecue down there. Some people are cooking up some food down in Bohemian Flats. You can smell the charcoal. Well, you can't, but I can't. It smells like charcoal. If you want to light a briquette of charcoal, you'll get that immersive experience. The real spring in Minnesota experience. Bridge takes us on this side. So we're hitting about that one hour mark, so I will probably start heading back towards the point where I can cut the video off. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed Cedar Riverside and views of the Mississippi River, Seven Corners, a little bit of University of Minnesota campus and Dinky Town on this gorgeous spring day. Oh, there's that Bluff Street Park we were just that I was looking at from above. You know, sometimes things just come together. Uh, it says this connects to the West River Parkway straight ahead in 0.1 mile downtown in a mile and a half this direction, which we're going to head. And the East Bank in about a half mile, which is where we'll end up. Riverview Tower here on the right. One that we walked by and saw from up above.
Now the sign said this direction to get towards West Bank and downtown. There's no continued signage for directions. I think it's up this way. little patios on that upper level decks only some of the units have them Back this way, it's a way to get straight ahead to take you back towards that. No, getting ahead of myself here. That can you can loop around back there to get to the courtyard Marriott, but to get to Seven Corners themselves, it's be this way. This is the Seven Corners apartment. There's those ones that I was looking at the deck on there. Look at the light on that space. This person's hanging out up there, having a good old time. Nice little public space in that, uh, that building. Unless that's just a single unit's private spot, but I don't believe it is. All right, so we're walking towards Second Street here. Yeah, there's the uh, law school, Walter Mandale Hall, Mondale Hall. I was actually talking with one of my neighbors the other day and I found out that Walter Mondale used to live uh, up the street from us, which is kind of cool. Yeah, this direction will take you back up to Seven Corners there, the brew pub and all that. Towards the highway. And then over here to the light rail station and Cedar Riverside. light rail station down there.
still uh, still always kicks me off guard when I see people riding motorcycles without helmets. I'm from a state where you can't legally ride a motorcycle without a helmet, so when I see people casually riding around, just hair flowing in the wind, it, uh, it's always a little surprising. It's different laws in different states. All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the video here by the Humphrey School of Public Affairs on the University of Minnesota East Bank. We'll go ahead and thank you all for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And uh, give me a recommendation of where to go to, for a walk next. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until I see you again, I hope your days continue to go well. Thank you.